All right, I am going to go ahead and call us to order. Welcome, Dr. Shabazz. Thank you for joining. And I am calling to order the August 28th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.04 p.m. With the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, the meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. This meeting, as Jennifer said, is being recorded. I'm gonna do a quick sound check, and then I'm also gonna check in with Jennifer. Um, what we have here on the agenda in terms of approving these minutes, which were also on the agenda last week and we did not um, approve, are they all ready still to go? Is that still the right right uh, dates? Uh, you're muted, Jennifer. It's only been like four years now. 731 through 821 are new and you guys haven't received those, but you can approve the 64, 611, and 612, 710 meeting minutes that we're in the packet. Great. Okay. So let me make sure everyone can hear and be heard. I'm going to start with, with you, um, Hala. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Dr. Rhodes. I can hear you and I hope you can hear me. Yes, very well. And Dr. Shabazz. Yes, I'm here and I will establish my video connection when it's feed. No problem. No worries at all. Okay, and we can hear you. So I'm going to put a motion on the floor before we go to our first period of public comment to approve minutes. Um, the motion is to approve the June 4th, 2023, June 11th, 2023, June 12th, 2023, and uh, the July 10th, 2023. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Dr. Rhodes seconds. Um, any discussion? Okay, so I'm going to do a roll call vote, and I'll start with you, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, Irvai. Hala? Aye. I'm an aye, and Dr. Shabazz? Yes. Okay, thank you. So those minutes have been approved. Um, just uh, so we have for the record here, Ms. Bridges and Yvonne and Alexis are unable to join us today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and call our first period of public comment. Um, and if you would like to make public comment, please use the ra raise hand function and I will read our uh, statement. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of a chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. Uh, we will not engage in a dialogue, but we will be listening closely. So I'll just wait a second. Okay, so I'm not seeing any hands right now, but we will come back um, for our second period of public comment later. Okay, woo, breath. <laughs> um, so today we have um, some import, very, very important matters to discuss. So I'm glad we were able to get to a quorum here. The first thing that I wanted to go over with you all is the timeline. Um, given where we're at in our process and when we're expected to uh, publish and present on our report, we I put together a timeline that I would like everyone to take a look at, and I'm going to share my screen in a second to do that. And then beyond that, we have um, the discussion of our recommendation on the fund, and Irv and I had a very productive meeting this morning with Paul Bachelman and uh, with the chair of the finance committee, as well as the town council president. And that was uh, very helpful. And so we'll talk with you about that. 
And then we have to um, decide on our successor body charge. So um, that's something that we have a template for, but we haven't really filled in the blanks. We haven't really deliberated on that um, very heavily. And based on the timeline that I put out for you now, we can decide how we want to approach that. Uh, we also have one outstanding recommendation that I uh, wanted to make sure we uh, concluded today, which is in relation to health. We began that discussion last meeting, and I just wanted to make sure that we have a, a solid understanding on that. Um, and so we'll we'll move into some of these other, there's other kind of little pieces, um, such as uh, I'd like to get your permission to share the report with uh, select folks um, for some feedback uh, so that we can um, incorporate any, any uh, sort of high level feedback that we might get from some folks. And I'll explain more about that. Um, okay, so let's start with the time. Any questions on any of that? That was a mouthful. All right, so I'm going to just share my screen. I think I should have the ability to do that. Looks like I do. Um, and let me make sure. What I do with it. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay. All right. Oh, no, that's not it. Hang on. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. So um, let's start here uh, at the top. And already you'll see in this timeline that one of the pieces of the timeline didn't happen yet. And there's a good reason for that. So um, I was hoping to circulate the draft, uh, the current draft to you all on Saturday. Um, but given the circumstances of having this meeting this morning, I decided that it would be best for Mattia to incorporate whatever our recommendation is going to be there. Um, as well as continue to incorporate some of the other pieces and then to circulate the draft. So our goal is to come out of this meeting to get the rest of the recommendations in order and then circulate the draft to you all uh, this evening. So, um, you know, you can just assume assume that. So here we, um, on today, I had the 10 a.m. meeting. We've already spoken about that. We have um, the, uh, where it says MK edits, this means that it's sort of going into the process with Mattia and, and we're editing based on uh, what we've discussed and deliberated upon. Um, so we have our 2 p.m. meeting. I'm just gonna move through this pretty quickly. The most important thing that we need to think about is um, the next few days. Um, Mattia is going to be unplugging starting in the afternoon of August 31st um, for some personal matters. And so uh, we'll be available again on the 5th. Um, so let me just stop the share quickly to say that in the meeting this morning, um, Lynn expressed that given what we have going on in the community right now, particularly the resignations um, on the school committee and having to have special meetings and provide additional agenda items for that, um, she is asking for our flexibility in the case that we may need to present our findings on October 2nd, as opposed to September 18th. Um, and I just wanted to put that out there to the committee. I think that she would make it happen for us on September 18th if she could, uh, but it will be sort of a full agenda as I understand it. It's also the night that we have the public forum on the master plan. Um, so October 2nd would be the next meeting. And uh, that does not mean that we can't finish our work before then, but it just means that we have to decide on when we would like to have it published. And then um, if October 2nd is, is the date, that's the date. So any objections or concerns or considerations that we should 
um, be thinking about with respect to that? Michelle, what is your uh, inclination? Um, I hear uh, what uh, uh, Council Member Greismer is saying. It sounds um, uh, eminently wise to me and also the logistics of what else is on tap for that September meeting. Uh, but what is your own recommendation? My recommendation is that we stay the course in terms of our work because there are members that are already sort of like unable to continue to attend because we're beyond the timeline that we had, you know, discussed like Yvonne is sort of struggling to fit things in, you know, so I think this is great in the sense that it gives us a little extra cushion, but we should still stick to a timeline here um, and so that we can sort of finalize our piece of things. Does that make sense, Dr. Spaz? So just understanding. So stick with the timeline we're pushing for, but at this point going ahead and accepting the October uh, date that that's been proffered. Yes, if Lynn um, responds to me and says, hey, you know what? Yeah, I think we, we need to do this October 7th. I'm not gonna, I don't think we should make an issue at all of that. I think we should go go with that um, and and certainly respect there's a lot you know going on right now. Does that work okay for you, Dr. Shabazz and others? Just speaking for myself, I think it works fine. You know, one of the things we talked about was the opportunity to have more of this, the uh, university and college community uh, present uh, when when the uh, meetings would happen, presenting the report to the community. And I think this actually works better because it gives us a little more time to begin to notify uh, members of the campus community and, and um, you know, get them get them tuned in than if we proceeded with the with that September date. Uh, folks will have only been back about a week um, by that September date and we'd really have to ramp up to begin to even kind of, you know, and we'd be letting people know in the midst of all the noise of the start of the new semester. So I think uh, I, I you know for those for those reasons that we previously discussed, I think the uh, uh, going with the date yeah, date certain there in October is is perhaps uh, even even better for those purposes. Those are great points, absolutely. And um, you know, I guess I would just be curious what the committee feels about uh, you know, how in advance of the presentation to the town council do we want to publish the report itself? Um, so we can think about that. I always intended to publish it at least five days prior to that meeting because we want to give the council and the public an opportunity to look at it before we present, um, especially if, you know, we may or may not have a specific period of public comment. Um, if if Lynn is, is open to that and we want that, we may be able to incorporate that into the agenda as well so that folks who would like to speak. Um, so in that case, you know, getting it out there before that meeting might be, you know, is is a is a is a good opportunity to allow for that to happen. Any other comments or questions about that piece of things? Just a quick comment on that last piece. One thing that might be uh, good to go out even prior to the five days that you're talking about. Um, which would probably be like September 30th or 31st, is if uh, we had cohered around uh, in the executive summary part uh, a little sooner, we could perhaps go ahead and, and release the executive summary and noting that our our uh, larger report will be will be coming out, you know, at the time of the uh, scheduled meeting. That's an interesting thought, and that's actually, I'm really glad that you brought that up, Dr. Shabazz. Um, Mattia and I have been discussing um, the executive summary quite a bit, and it was on my in my notes to uh, discuss that with you all. So let me just do that now uh, while we're while we're on that topic. So I uh, 
have been, you know, thinking, I've looked at a lot of different reports and trying to understand really what the purpose of an executive summary is. Um, and oftentimes an executive summary is just, it's for that, it's for like executives or, or sort of like in this case, the council um, to have a high level view of what's in the report. Um, and I have sort of a gut feeling really that uh, we may be better just to not have an executive summary at all um, and really uh, create a circumstance in which people, if they want to know what it is that we're recommending and what our findings are, that they will have to read the report. Um, so I'm curious what other, I think that it's been a very traditional method to use an executive summary, um, in reports and I understand why it's done, but I'm not necessarily tied to having one. And so I'm curious what other folks feel about that. Dr. Shabazz. So, you know, um, we could even by my standpoint, just kind of throw out the language of executive summary. What I really have in mind is. A, uh, a message that, um, you know, digests what is the, um, you know, what to expect in the report. And so, for example, that can be said, uh, Dr. Rhodes once commented that I speak in paragraphs. So, you know, that can be digested into one paragraph that the uh, what is forthcoming is a 1000 page report that <laughs> will, well, inclusive of the appendices. <laughs> inclusive of the appendices, but but is a 1,000 page report that uh, addresses the charge of the AHRA in terms of uh, uh, recommendations of a uh, an ongoing or successor structure, uh, the uh, financing uh, of a local reparation program relative to the uh, two million dollar fund previously. Uh, created by the council, as well as other uh, comments on on financing, and um, a compendium of the uh, of the recommendations and uh, op uh, points raised about the the, the harms that a um, that a reparations program should address uh, that we heard and uh, have uh, discussed and analyzed after. Uh, X number of community listing sessions, uh, a robust community survey process uh, involving so many respondents, uh, you know, uh, uh, work done uh, nationally with leading uh, uh, reparations organizations and even internationally to consult for best practices and ideas. Boom, that's the paragraph, you know, so it's just basically, you know, digesting what's coming why you want to read it, and uh, and what are some of the ways in which uh, it will be speaking to our charge. So that may not be the, the traditional executive summary idea, but that's really what I have in mind that could perhaps be, uh, be released uh, uh, in advance. Excellent. Okay. That's really, really great. Um, would anybody like to add to that or comment on that? I think that's 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 a really excellent su suggestion, Dr. Shabazz. Okay, um, great. So let's uh, let's go let's go with that. And so um, now that we've moved um, from this agenda item of talking about the timeline, uh, let's continue on. I I'd, I'd like to share uh, first what has been added to this draft that you will receive um, or will be added um, to this draft that you will receive uh, this evening. So based on our discussion today, uh, we will um, firm up the funding recommendation. Uh, we've also worked on the concentric circles recommendation to incorporate the conversations that we've had about uh, eligibility. Um, and then I have um, added an additional recommendation that I wanted to just quickly um, get feedback on here. It occurred to me that we did not have a recommendation in the report regarding continued education to mostly the non-Black community 
regarding the importance of reparations. Um, this is really integral because in order to sustain support for reparations in Amherst, as well as to develop support, we need to be um, cognizant that education is, is a critical element there. So um, the Stolen Beam series, which many folks are uh, have either participated in or are um, aware of, is what I wanted us to consider recommending, um, not exclusively, but that it be used as an example. Um, and the question I had for the committee was, initially I had thought that any, the Stolen Beam series is free, but any sort of uh, resources that would be committed, say, toward marketing that series, um, I thought initially, okay, we have the reparations fund to cover that. But then I thought, would it make more sense for the recommendation actually be that the money comes from the DEI or from some other source, um, given that it is not going to necessarily directly impact Black residents um, the way that the other recommendations are. So the floor is open if anybody would like to comment on that. Don't you kind of think the allyship of the non-Black members kind of is equally as important as that all the other recommendations to continue? the reparations absolutely so but what do you do you mean like in terms of where the funding for that oh i see well i mean i think if you can link it to the dei department or to the hrc or to the like if you have the hrc or the cssjc be a co-sponsor of the event then it can easily come out of their budget okay does that, from a philosophical perspective, land, uh, you know, as opposed to using money from the fund, whatever it is that we have on an annual basis, um, and again, the resources, it's a free program in that case, um, but maybe marketing it will have some, you know, resources attached to it. The only thing, I, I, so I, I hear sort of two parts. So to the first part, I think, and I thought we maybe even had already, you know, agreed that that kind of ongoing educational work is is definitely something we want to recommend and, and, and ask the, the council to in, um, you know, whatever ways. Uh, but the it sounds, the second part of what you raised, uh, it, it sounds like specifically more about a, um, uh, particularly budgetary aspect uh, around the marketing piece. And, you know, I think that is a, um, it's probably really more an item that the successor body could really reasonably, you know, uh, uh, reconcile or, or, or address. I think it's sufficient. I, in my view, I think it's sufficient enough now to recommend that we, uh, uh, you know, that, that the, the town would embrace all such educational activities and, uh, and, and, and support accordingly. You know, it, it could be something that the, our marketing division from within the town, um, you know, Brianna Sunrid and, and uh, that area uh, may have ideas and resources at a cost or at no cost that could really help to market and to amplify. So I, I think rather than right now have to load up a, a recommendation that you know calls for uh, a particular monetary support around marketing. I I think it's sufficient to simply say that we're we're recommending support for educational uh, work such as stolen bean series and 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 others, and that the town would uh, um, you know in uh, uh, look at how to support in uh, ongoing ways, whether and again through its own marketing division through TTI. Uh, HRC, as, as um, um, you know, uh, Jennifer is raising, you know, but, but that we could just kind of leave that uh, open-ended um, rather than trying to, uh, you know, nail down uh, calls for a, a specific budget amount or support for a budget amount at this point. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. 
All right, great. And so if there aren't any other comments on that, I'm going to move on um, to the fund. And uh, I would like for, for Dr. Rhodes and I to share with the committee uh, the sort of summary of what <clears throat> Of our of our discussion this morning, um, Dr. Rhodes, would you like to do that, or would you like me to to start off on that? Uh, honestly, uh, <clears throat> Mr. I would like for you to do it. I have two more meetings today, and I'm fading rapidly. I know. I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness, we're just so it's it's not an easy time right now. So absolutely, let me um, try to summarize what 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 occurred today. So we had a very productive meeting. Uh, we shared. Uh, the two possibilities. So essentially, I started the meeting by um, by saying that when we started talking about this two months ago, what we talked about was the need to have meaningful money now for initiatives. So we went to Sean and we said, hey, Sean, we recognize that the current paradigm um, basically makes us uh, wait 10 years uh, before we can start pursuing initiatives. Um, and that within the sort of context now of these recommendations, particularly given the recommendations are in many ways um, uh, companions or co in collaboration with other initiatives that are all already ongoing in the town, um, we would like to have meaningful money now to begin our work. And so Sean came back to us and he said, I agree, essentially. And why don't you recommend accelerating the growth of the fund? And so then we came back and we said, okay, what are the options for accelerating the growth of the fund? The first option that um, I had put out there was to move the balance of what's uh, committed, what's left of the full $2 million commitment um, from the current reserve account and just sort of like move that money into the reparations bucket. Um, and again, um, it, for anybody who is isn't who may be watching or isn't clear on this, um, so this is has always we've all, we've talked about this fund being like an endowment fund. So only the investment income off of the principal will be used on an annual basis toward initiatives. So the first option was okay, let's move this money from this bucket to this bucket that's labeled reparations, and then on an annual basis, the town can pay itself back uh, into the reserves, and then we'll have um, the 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 income there to be able to begin pursuing initiatives immediately. The second option, uh, so we went back to Sean with that. Sean also thought that was a good idea, but had some concerns that were more related to. Uh, precedent setting and some other things. And he said, instead, why don't you consider picking an amount of time that is less than 10 years, so like four years, and saying, um, we recommend that you accelerate the growth of the fund um, and get it to 2 million within four years. And, and so you divide out the 1.6 that's left and would have to, through certified free cash, um, transfer that money over on an annual basis for the next four years. Both of those options were well received by the people that we met with this morning. Um, and then there was a third option that was presented. The third option was the possibility of, okay, right now we model the annual contribution off of um, the cannabis tax revenue, and we know that the revenue is declining. Um, so the, uh, the, the, um, the option to explore is let's say, uh, it's a hundred thousand dollars this year that, uh, cannabis tax revenue is a hundred thousand dollars. And so it comes time for certified free cash to be transferred into our, uh, fund. And so what we do there is we say, we've determined that X number is needed to meaningfully uh, create reparations initiatives on an annual basis. I'm going to use $50,000 just as an example. Um, so that meaningful number 
is $50,000. And so of that $100,000, we're going to take 50,000 and we're going to use it. And then the other 50, we're going to put into the fund. So this is going to mean that the endowment itself is going to take a lot longer to grow to that $2 million figure, but it's also going to mean that we have the funds available to us immediately um, to begin pursuing the initiatives that uh, the that the black community uh, chooses to pursue. So that's a third option. Um, and so what sort of came out of the meeting is, and what I would like to recommend to the committee is that we include in this recommendation a preamble that identifies the problem with the current paradigm, identifies the need, meaning what is our funding goal that we feel is significant on an annual basis, and then outlines these three options um, and asks that uh, the council take those to the finance committee uh, to review and explore and determine um, uh, what would be the best way for the town to meet our goals. Another mouthful, sorry, I'm just full of them today. I'm gonna pause and um, and see if there are any uh, responses or how folks are feeling about that approach. I would just ask if Irv has uh, is is able uh, to if he has anything to to add or or amend to that. No, uh, Doctor Woods, you uh, Michelle did a tremendously good job of summarizing all those options and. Now, I particularly like the one where we get it all up front. And the other one is that I like also is that we we take uh, part of what would be coming to us now and spend it, uh, uh, target it for expenditure, and the rest uh, will be uh, done as a contribution as we would have already done. So a lot of this is... Uh, one of the ideas and one of the two of those ideas are all based upon the discounted cash flow model. And and I think both of you know, all of them have 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 have, have an opportunity. I, as I st stated to both Paul and Len, want to have something nailed down um, and that is agreed on so we don't have to depend upon the actions of future councils. Thank you. Um, and thank you both for the meeting and for uh, this this uh, presentation. Um, it, it's, I am just kind of mulling it over right now. I'm also attracted to the idea of the the upfront option. Um, but I'm I, and I just wanted to raise a question relative to that. What I heard as the challenge relative to the upfront is the way some council members might look at it as a precedent setting move that they might not support. Could any of you expand on where that that idea as you understand it, this this fear of creating a precedent? Yeah, I can share that. Um you know, when it came time to make decisions on funding the new elementary school building project, for example, um, there was a call from the community to take some of the funds from the reserves um, to to make the what we were going out to the community less, essentially. Um, and so uh, that precedent already got set. Um, I believe we agreed to move five million from the uh, from the reserves as well as ask Paul to find five million somewhere else. Um, so I think that Sean's concern was if we continue to take from the reserves in this way, um, are we setting a precedent that, I think in particular would put us in a position where we would um, be oppositional to our financial policy, which 
Um, our financial policy asks that we keep a reserve of a certain percentage. Um, and so the other piece I think that he was concerned about is will the council remember to pay itself back? I think they will. <laughs> um, but he he had that concern. And I think that, you know, given that this is the principal would remain intact no matter what, and if there was an emergency even, that the town would have the same mechanisms and controls to take that money and move it elsewhere for whatever it was needed for. Um, I don't think that concern is as, I think, I think, this precedent setting is the is sort of the the biggest concern from a practical and political perspective. Does that answer your question, Dr. Spess? It it does. And what I, I I hear you saying is it's not the fear of creating a new precedent; it's a fear of building uh, momentum around a precedent that was recently set that was you know that that had some folks not really fully on board and and probably it would come up again that hey you're we're going down a road that that you know we've we've done once and we don't want to do again is that is that along the lines of, of I it? think that's exactly right Dr. Shabazz and I think um because we would presumably have to consider the bulk of the reserves now is in this newly created capital reserves account and we have some very serious needs in uh, in the way of a DPW and a fire station and real people are being impacted on a daily basis in our community um, because of the condition of the DPW and the fire station. Um, and so there's going to be both practical and political um, concerns raised uh, related to taking money from the reserves that could potentially be used to fund one of those other projects or to partially fund. However, I did not get the sense, and maybe Dr. Rhodes has a different feeling on this, I did not get the sense that either of the two options we presented or the option that Paul thought of, I, I thought they were all on the table they were all very, uh, I, you know, they even said, you know, to us that they appreciated the the creativity and they appreciated the sort of critical thinking that we've put into this. So I think that they will seriously consider all three. Um, and I think the finance committee is, is, is the place for that to happen. And that doesn't mean that there can't be public input when that occurs, um, and there will be, I'm sure, um, and input also from this group. So my preference is not for us to take a hard, to draw a hard line in the sand and only put one thing and say, this is what we want and this is all we'll take. Because the reality is that's not what we're going to get necessarily. So I think if we put, if we show, if we demonstrate that we have thought this through, we understand the larger context, we understand the other competing demands, um, and here are the options that we would like you to consider. Um, I think that that approach will will get more support than a singular recommendation. Can I be heard? Yes, you can. Please. Uh, because my uh, this everything looks like this keeps going in and out, and I can't get my video back. I can't see you, just so you know. Yeah, we. Yeah, I, I can't get my video back. I don't know why. Maybe it didn't like the way I looked. Anyway. You're on, Dr. Rhodes. We can hear you. Did you want to? No, I didn't. I just wanted to confirm that you could hear me. Okay. Um. So, are there any other? Uh, are there any objections to that? approach. And of course, wait until you see the language, wait till you see the way that we've sort of framed it. Um, and, 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 and then we can, of course, uh, if there are, if there's any opposition to that, we can certainly come back to that, um, and, and discuss it. Sounds good. Okay. Excellent. 
Um, and Hala and Dr. Rhodes, I assume um, I don't see your hands raised, so I'm going to assume that it's it's safe to move on. Um, and please let me know if you'd like to come back to that. So the other two um, pieces that I wanted to make sure we covered today, the first is the health recommendation. I wanted to get some more clarity from the committee on that. Um, we agreed last week that we were going to recommend uh, or endorse at least the Board of Health statement on uh, race and health disparities in Amherst. And I've sent that all to you. And so um, the question here is, in other places in the report where we've endorsed something, we have a recommendation tied to it. Um, since I recently did receive the community health assessment that the Board of Health uh, did, and um, it has some very interesting information. And I will, I don't think that it's been formally published yet, but I think it's safe for me to to send it to the group and take a look at. But I'm wondering if that if it's only going to be an endorsement might we consider including it somewhere else in the report as opposed to it having a standalone recommendation? Or does this committee feel there is a particular recommendation around health that we would like to make that expands beyond endorsing that statement? And maybe the answer is that you need to look at the community assessment, um, but the, the floor is open for that. Okay. Um, well, I will send the community assessment. And if uh, there are thoughts on that, then we'll have to discuss that the next time we meet. Um, and for now, we'll do our best to put that recommendation um, into some language that makes sense within the context of the report. I'm also going to, because I'm sensing, uh, I know Dr. Rhodes is, is not feeling well. I know uh, Dr. Shabazz is also has some stuff going on. So um, let me just put out there that the committee charge that we're recommending has not uh, been approved by this body yet. I can do some work over the next few days to, to put uh, based on my understanding of committee charges, um, and based on all of our discussions here, I can put something together and I can send it to the committee for review and feedback. As always, you would just provide that feedback to me and Jennifer and Pamela. Um, and then we can make a final approval of that. Um, and at the same time, Mati and I will be working on concluding statements um, and acknowledgements for the report. Uh, we'll have a whole page of acknowledgements, I'm sure. Um, as well as sort of the visual aspects. I'll be working on a power, not a PowerPoint, but a slide deck for us for our presentation as well. So really the final matter that I wanted to cover before we call one uh, more period of public comment um, is I would like the committee's permission to share the report with some folks in the community. Um, and I'm totally open to uh, who others on the committee would like who you know would like me to share us to share the report with if there are uh, folks that you think would look at the report and be able to provide us with um, some feedback and particularly uh, black folks whether they're within the community or not um, that might be able to uh, and, and willing to to read the report and offer us feedback. So I first wanna ask if I have permission to share it, if there's any opposition um, to me sharing it with a few people, please let me know. Um, and I can share who those people are uh, if you if you reach out and you have you have any concerns and I'd also like to ask if there are any particular folks and you don't have to answer that now but that you think would be uh, good to, to to provide the draft to for some feedback and Jennifer I know you and I had talked about that at one point 
Um, so we can we can talk about that again if if you if you had anybody in mind. Okay. So I'm not seeing any opposition. Um, thank you for, you know, for that and for, for trusting me to share it with some folks. Um, I will check in with other committee members who are not here just to ensure that that's okay. Um, and we'll just, we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and call the second period of public comment. So if you would like to make public comment, please use the raise hand feature and um, I will, will bring you into the room. Okay, so I'm not seeing any public comment. And so before we wrap up, I just one more time would like to uh, review this timeline for myself. Um, so we are unable to meet, of course, next Monday <clears throat> due to the holiday. Um, so I had proposed in this timeline that we might be able to meet on Tuesday the 5th. Um, so I will do a poll so we don't have to do that right now and see if that's a possibility. I know probably some folks are getting back. Dr. Shabazz might the semester might be starting, holla. I don't know what others have going on, but I'll do a poll for that. Are there any other um, member comments or questions or anything at this time before I adjourn the meeting? All right, <laughs> it looks pretty quiet out there. <laughs> um, well, thank you all, really appreciate it. And um, we will we'll see you next week, next time. Thank you. Adjourning at 2.50. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you. You too, Jennifer. Bye.